two women I'm about to introduce to you, I believe, are two of the most talented broadcasters in this country, and I believe they broadcast happiness. Uh, Angelica Turns and Wendy Harmer are an example of a powerful friendship in a workplace, and in the world of the media, where that isn't always the case. Would you please make them welcome, Ange and Wendy Harmer. Ooh, hello there, and welcome. My name's Angelica Turns. And I'm Wendy Harmer. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Uh, the weather. Traffic. Yeah, traffic, weather, and uh, we'll be hearing from the police just shortly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's very humid. You probably know us from the radio. I mean, how many have, uh, folk have uh, heard Ange and I warbling away over the summer uh, on 702 Oh, only breakfast. two or three listeners. Well, that's what we do. Oh, yes, <laughs> four or <laughs> five. Angela and I broadcast together, and I think we're the only uh, female uh, radio double act in Australia. They've just put on uh, Chrissy Swan and Jane Hall in Melbourne on an FM station. Um, I've been writing all this last week about how in radio it's regarded as a very, very brave move to have two women on the radio That's together. It's radical, isn't it? Radical. And in fact, a TV executive told me, he said just last year, he said, you've got to understand it, Wendy, from the man's point of view. He said, you've been nagged by one woman all weekend and you turn on the radio and you get nagged by two. So that's why we can't put two women on the radio. So that's on commercial, but Angela and I, of course, have been working on the ABC. That's right. And uh, the other thing of, that we get criticism for is for laughing on the radio. When, uh, you know, two women laugh on the radio, we're often uh, criticised as being giggling Gerties. <laughs> as if we've stepped over some kind of line. I don't know if either of you have listened uh, to the cricket, the ABC's <laughs> cricket coverage. <laughs> Does it's Kerry O'Keefe mean anything to you? <laughs> Talk about a giggling Gertie. Yes. But anyway, that's our, little, um, that's our little political announcement before we go on. What we thought we might do is uh, Angela and I uh, both wrote a piece about each other, and we thought we would begin by reading you the piece that we wrote about each other, and then uh, we'll move on from there. It should answer very many questions. So, this is me to Angela. When Angela Caterns was broadcasting from the foyer of ABC 702, sitting amid the skeins of wool and the goodly knitters of Sydney, I'm pretty sure I was encouraging my listeners at Today FM to eat a cockroach for State of Origin tickets. <laughs> I did try to explain to Ange that a cockroach had been fed on peanut butter by its handler for weeks, and it was a bit like eating a caramello koala, but she's never bought it and she never will. In the summer of 2005, I was working at the ill-fated Titanic of radio, which was known as Vega. I don't know whether anybody knows that, as was Ange. And my greatest joy listening was list, listening to Ange on the, on the breakfast shift as I drove across the bridge to the station in Piermont. She was warm and wise and had a voice that could melt a caramello koala from Aww. behind the tri line at Homebush. Aww. And that laugh, well, of course, everyone in Sydney loves to hear Angela laugh. I resolved to work with her, and because she was at the same radio station as me, surely I could swing it. Oh, no, 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 we can't have two women on the radio together. <laughs> and the bloke, you remember who it was? He completely blanched. No, 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 no. It was sort of like a chant from George Orwell's Animal Farm. Two blokes, good. Two women, four breasts, bad. <laughs> So some years after much wrangling, Ange and I ventured into the brave new world of the ABC and we were given our own podcast, which was called Is It Just Me? And I hadn't really talked to Angela until we sat down in front of that microphone and uh, for that weekly podcast. Um, I thought I was getting to know her while she was quietly unravelling me, often to helpless laughter or pathetic tears. And I learnt that there's an audience of all ages and genders who find I find it actually quite tolerable to listen to the travails and triumphs of two women of a certain age. I learnt that beyond the shock and awe of politics and celebrity, there's much to be discovered in the minutiae of life, and often that's where we find most of our connection. 
I, le I also learned that sometimes you can hear a voice you admire and with perseverance, convince them to enter into a conversation with you. And she teaches me to listen. I find her take on the world challenging, honest and refreshing. And of all the people I've worked with, she probably makes me laugh the most. Which so is funny for a non-comedian, Well, isn't that's it? right. And I was actually I on the Mardi Gras float with Julian Clary for three hours. And he didn't make me laugh once. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy and I both had parallel careers in, uh, in Breakfast Radio. Wendy was on Two Day FM for a long time with a team of blokes, of course, and, uh, and I was on 702 ABC Sydney doing their breakfast show for a number of years. And both of us um, went to number one in our various uh, positions. Wendy went to number one on Two Day FM. Uh, yeah, we both beat Alan Jones in the ratings. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and what happened when you went to number one, Wendy? Well, I was given a very, 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 very large bonus, enough to buy a new car. And Angela... And when I went to number one, the uh, then managing director of the ABC came downstairs and he had a $12 bottle of champagne. <laughs> And he said, well done, Ange. <laughs> and Angela, every time we bring, we're out anywhere, she brings that up. <laughs> still, still looking for the sympathy vote, I That's think. That's right. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I wrote about Wendy, um, you know, when we were talking about the two of us. I said that I'm so happy to have someone else with whom to compare and contrast the unmistakable signs of reaching a certain age and to do radio with. Uh, she's an old pro at radio, of course, and so am I. Uh, we've mentioned that we had parallel careers for decades without actually knowing each other. And it was uh, during and after the unfortunate failed experiment that was Vega that we finally met and clicked. Our two series of podcasts for the ABC uh, has been some of the most enjoyable and rewarding work that I've ever done. Wendy makes me own up to things I've previously been too shy or embarrassed to talk about. She knows my age, my real age. For some reason, I, <laughs> for some reason I find I'm unable to lie to Ms. Harmer. She knows I sometimes read my laptop on the toilet. She knows about my ego-destroying bra shopping experience during which I was encouraged, forced to buy a bra which encases my lymph nodes. And like me, she's at a loss to understand why that's necessary. <laughs> she also knows I don't wear belts anymore, and neither does she. You need a waist for a belt, of course. So we both find them pretty useless these days. A couple of mine have been put into service, you know, tying up a sleeping bag and, uh, and to do up a, a rolled up foam mattress, to which Ms. Harmer compares her own waist. <laughs> Wendy astutely observes that we don't really have two breasts anymore, we have a bosom. <laughs> And she listens patiently to my endless rants about the size of prams today and how they're totally out of proportion to the babies inside them. <laughs> Wendy is a very funny woman, as I'm sure you know. Working with her has taught me a valuable lesson, always take a hanky into the studio. We end up laughing so much I have tears rolling down my face on a regular basis and snot running out of my nose. <laughs> And before Wendy, I would have been far too embarrassed to say that word. We also both uh, shed many tears at the feedback that we received from listeners all over the world for whom we've really struck a chord. So Wendy and I are definitely not grumpy old women. We're just women of a certain age with opinions who love to laugh. Now, I suppose that we should get back to the reading the laptop on the toilet, and I see you brought this stinky thing with you. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have you, who uses their laptop or their iPad on the toilet, no, ladies and gentlemen? No, I'm sorry. Show of hands, own up. No, I'm sorry. You see, I'm so not That's alone. That's taking multitasking to two, <laughs> you know, to a level that it never should be at. No, 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 we can't multitask. That's no what good. What about tele all. talking on the telephone on the toilet? I was in a hotel this week and I noticed, you know, they, they install a telephone right beside you. 
What's the why? Why is it okay to do that in all hotels, but not to take your, your I laptop? Suppose, I think you're supposed to be talking to people outside. I think you're just supposed to be sort of talking to the intercom in the other room, or or in case no. you run, run out of no. toilet paper or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to be. That's but not right. The other thing that you, well, let's move with the other topic there that Angela mentioned that I should actually tell you that Angela, I know how much Angela's breasts weigh. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I told her, because I weighed them. <laughs> <laughs> One by one. <laughs> Tell everyone why. Because I wanted to lose weight and I wanted to find out how much my breasts were contributing to my overall weight. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most... This is the most it's hilarious true. thing. I'm seeing. This is the most hilarious thing about Angela. Angela has been... She admitted recently she's been on a diet for four years and she's lost one kilo. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I love it. Is that not <laughs> what life is like? <laughs> and oh, Steve, funny. Yeah. So yes, we belts. do know quite intimate things about we each do. other, I must say. What, what we should do is... Um, I'm not even going to go about into the size of prams. Now, Angela is... she, she Go comes into over, the size of prams. Well, she comes over as a quite tolerable and charming sort of person <laughs> on the air. But actually, she does display a few sort of mm. nannerish tendencies. She's a terrible eavesdropper. She hangs around... Remember those two people you eavesdropped in, in, a in, in a grocery shop. store? Yeah, that's right. She listens to people's conversations and comes in and repeats them to me. And she admonishes people quite a lot. And she also complains about the size of prams. And she also, which she won't tell you, parks... This is... Because she doesn't agree that young women should have such <laughs> large pram-like appliances, Angela parks in this, their spaces designated in the shopping mall. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, exactly. And your what reasoning is, is your reasoning is because... Because they didn't have them when I was a, <laughs> a mother of a young child. <laughs> You know, I'm getting my due here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting my due. But look, let's just back up to prams. I mean, what is seriously is that about? These huge modern prams that are, you know, a metre wide and your average baby is this big. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the pram has become a status they're clogging symbol. up your trendy cafe. That's the only <laughs> thing that, you know, is the problem. No, that's what not true. What we thought we might do is we have got a whole lot of funny letters here from doing our podcast. We did a series called... Uh, we did a couple of series called Is It Just Me? And, um, and then we did... What was the one we did for Radio it's National? News, it's, it's news, news to, to me. me. Mm. And then we did one on um, that's on my website, the hoopla. And then .com .au. Dot com dot AU, and Just they like are that, called yeah. In the Loop with Wendy and Ange. So I thought we might read you some of the feedback and um, some of the topics that people have raised, and we shall expand further. So... Uh, Lisa says, I have just recently discovered your podcast and like everybody else, I just love it. Look, I'm reading these out because it really is interesting because all these people tell us how they laugh out, you know, where they're laughing and how it actually disturbs everybody around them and how they <laughs> feel so strange when they laugh. And it really is an interesting insight on the fact that we don't really do a lot of public laughing. So, um, you know, it sounds like I'm, we're being, might be a bit self-aggrandizing, but there is a point to it. I made people wonder on the river cat as I laugh out loud or almost convulse while trying not to. I think it is amazing that you can have us in hysterics one second and almost in tears as you share deeply personal stories from your lives. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy, for the game idea, hospitals with Mama as the patient. <laughs> <laughs> and Ange, I have loved listening to you since the morning show on Triple J, which is why I am prepared to forgive you for your anti-pram stance. <laughs> <laughs> and big car stance you edited yeah, that you, bit out. Yeah, you must have raved on about this as well. Have you tried to fit three children and all the food they can eat in a small car? Well, yes. Well, 
Uh, the, the game hospitals with Mama was a little game that I invented when the children were young for when I had a hangover. <laughs> and so what the game was, was Mum is in intensive care. <laughs> <laughs> And I used to get the kids to build an oxygen tent out of blankets over the top of me <laughs> and then bring me food and drinks. <laughs> and look, <laughs> until I felt better. Do you know there's nothing like a very small child's hand on your forehead yeah. <laughs> to actually cure a hangover? That is true. You should try it. Come and just put your hand there, darling, and oh, that makes oh, mummy so feel better. So better. that was my game that I That invented. was very lovely. Okay. This was an email that uh, we were sent by Perry, who wrote, surprisingly, um, we seem to appeal to a lot of men, which is fantastic because, yep. you know. Well, we remind them of their aunties. Mad aunties. Oh, well, I think. maybe. Anyway, Perry wrote, I was sitting in traffic listening to the tweezers over the scrotum episode. <laughs> <laughs> crying with laughter, people in other, uh, in other cars staring at this middle-aged man on his own, in a car, lying over the steering wheel in hysterics. So perhaps you will uh, illuminate us and, and, uh, and recount the tweezers over the scrotum episode. Well, it was really, it was, well, it was really, I was talking about the depth of love between a husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like to think it, of it. That my husband had been working in the yard and he got a whole lot of ticks in his scrotum and he trusted me to take them out with tweezers. And I just thought that was the most great and deep expression of our trust for each other. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the fact that I'm able to tell you now is another expression of that. Uh, that <laughs> tell you all and I'll go home and say, everyone at the town hall loved the scrotum story. Yes. Yeah. And he'll be so thrilled and that you've taken thrilled. out again. Yeah, you've taken yeah. the story out again and given yeah. a bit of an outing. Take, take the story out for that an outing or his scrotum. Sto no, the story. <laughs> And the scrotum. I don't take his... I, I tend to leave his scrotum with him, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes. But I must admit that when we do go out, sometimes we do share one brain. And, um, uh, you know, like who's... Are you going to have the brain this evening or shall I? That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Okay. What's the next letter here? Um, Shirley, Sh Shirley raises an interesting uh, topic. Shirley. In here's a great topic. I, can now, I can't thank you enough for the pleasure you're bringing me. It's now possible to, for me to tackle my ironing without reaching for the Sauvignon Blanc. There we go. <laughs> I just plug myself into your podcast and the minutes fly by. Having just purchased a, a, purchased a car which assaults me with its incessant beeping at every opportunity, your discussion on this topic caused me to laugh so much I almost peed my pants. <laughs> Thanks, girls. You're doing me the world of good. Here's the thing. I bought, who's got a car? You know, you don't put your seatbelt on. It nags you. Me, me, me. We've all got one of those, aren't they? They so, just so never annoying. stop nagging. And they just, it's like being nagged to death. Mm. Well, I was sitting there the other day at the computer, you know, and, and everything these days beeps, doesn't it? Everything beeps. Yeah. So I'm sitting at the computer and I hear beep, 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 beep. I thought, is that, have I left the fridge open? Is that the iron? Is that a truck reversing? Is that a truck reversing down the back street? Is it the smoke detector? <laughs> Has one of the kids left a computer on? Is it the washing machines out of balance? <laughs> <laughs> Have I left the car door open? <laughs> Is it the microwave? <laughs> Is something about to burst into flames, for Christ's sake? <laughs> I was just reflecting on the amount of things that beep. And Angela, you should tell them about your washing oh, machine. Oh, the washing machine. My darling washing machine plays a tune at the end of the cycle. Does anyone have that machine? And Angela yes. thinks it might be the Korean National I Anthem. I thought it was the Korean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after extensive research, that's been disproved, that theory of mine. Apparently it's a bit of Bach. No, H Haydn. Haydn. It's a piece Haydn. by Haydn. Mm. I thought it was the Korean National Anthem, because of course it's, it's a Samsung, you know. <laughs> 
but it's Haydn. It's Why would you put Haydn in your... <laughs> if except that there was some socks Haydn in there. <laughs> anyway. No, no, no. Um, let's move on. Um, I think how much we've got. We've got a little bit of time left here for another, another topic. What other topic have we got, Anne? Well, um, there's the, the... I like this one from Norm. He says, when I get together with people, all we seem to do is complain about the world and find fault with other people. I suppose in my mid-60s, wrote Norm, I am a grumpy old man, but not an amusing grump. You both have a love of life that is infectious and listening to you makes me happy to still be alive. Even when you talk about serious topics like female body parts... Oh. Oh, 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 no, I had no idea what the are female no. body parts. Maybe it's the lymph nodes inside Except the bra. this is what Ange really seriously went for a bra fitting. And tell them what happened with the lady with the... Well, thing. of course, you know, you think you're maybe 32B, maybe 34C. I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Anyway, I'm ending up with something ending in E. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the woman who fitted me, who's respectable and has her own store that apparently does very, very well, um, explains to me that it has to go right around under my armpits and in, encase my lymph nodes within. So, you know, the whole one cup is about this big. <laughs> and it, I swear, it, go, it keeps going halfway around my back. And I couldn't help thinking how sexy that sounded. <laughs> Come on, Dales, give us a look at your lymph nodes. <laughs> You know, <laughs> there's this horrible, horrible image of peering, peeling off your bra. I don't know whether your lymph nodes sprawling out or what the hell. Or <laughs> That's right. If they get old, bigger when you get older or I don't know what the point about that is. But we don't very, you know, we don't seriously uh, talk about body parts very often. We do talk about our children quite a lot. We yeah, talk we about our mums and our families and all sorts of things. We, we've made each other cry quite a lot. Shall we go on to Kerry and Kelly to finish up, Anne? All right, let's do that. You might go with Kerry. All right. So um, this was an email from Kerry who wrote, I've just returned from hospital and want to tell you that my hideous recovery was not helped, not helped, <clears throat> by having discovered your podcasts. Having had my right shoulder operated on, jiggling with laughter, only hindered the recovery process <laughs> as I drifted in and out of painkiller heaven. My first night at home had my husband waking in fright thinking I was suffering some post-op seizure <laughs> as I tried to suppress my laughter. I'm living in Switzerland, which, which only has two national jokes. It used to be one, but I think we had a referendum to allow a second. <laughs> Anyway, she says, it's been a long time since laugh out loud laughs. I've sent you off to all my friends who also need a good laugh. Funny, when you've got everything you want, all I dream of is coming home. Ah, uh, Westfield shopping centres, mowing grass on a Sunday, packets of sliced bread, and waiters who pour the same amount of wine into women's glasses as men's. There you go. <laughs> That's from, a, from a, a, a sad expat. I've got to just tell one little story here, here Ange, about that painkiller heaven. When I was in the Mater Hospital, I'd just given birth to my son, and he was due to be born on Christmas Day. Uh, but he came a few days early, and I had a cesarean section, and so I was in the Mater recovering from this, and it, became, and it was Christmas Day. So I, I, I was lying there because I demanded pethidine at every five minutes. Like, oh, I've got a bit of pain now. I think I need more pethidine, I really do. So I was having a whale of an old time there. And um, there was one particular point in the evening where I woke up and I was in this sort of, you know, in my hospital room there with the snowy white counterpane and, you know, the well, surrounded by beautiful flowers. Counterpane. That's yes. a nice, quaint little turn of phrase, darling. Thank you very much, Did Angela. you get that from Granny oh, Brown? Pardon? Did you get that from Granny Brown? Yes, I did, from my <laughs> nan. And anyway, so and then and so it was a beautiful, beautiful scene. And at the end of my bed, in this snowy white scene, were these people who were singing Christmas carols, and they were singing, "Oh, come, all ye faith." And I thought, Christ, I've died. <laughs> 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 I thought, oh, shit, I must have died during childbirth. In childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I looked over and I saw the baby and went, oh, thank goodness for that. Anyway, I should go on with the last, the last letter that we have here because we've only got a few minutes left. It's from Kelly. I love your shows. Uh, it's wonderful ponderings on life, as we all know it. My only complaint is when I listen to your program, I'm usually on my way to work or on the way home. And as I march along with headphones in place through the grim city streets with my serious com commuter expression in place, just like everyone around me, I inevitably end up giggling and grinning at the things you guys say. For the minor things, I can usually disguise my amusement with a hand across my face. But when it's something really funny, I end up looking like some nutter, grinning madly and <laughs> bursting into giggles. Isn't there something wrong with society when we have to hide our happiness for fear that we'll seem a bit odd? So it's a lovely one. And, and we should lovely. finish up with Pete, Pete the, the Truckie. Pete the Truckie. Pete the Truckie. This is our, probably our favourite, favourite letter And he of rings all. up whenever we do our, um, our stint over the summer on the breakfast show too, Pete the Truckie. And he, so this is what he's written. Hello, goddesses. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> Adore your bloody show. More power to yous. Glad you found each other. Don't fight ever. <laughs> so uh, we don't think we'll do that. We won't think we'll do. I mean, we, I think the thing is for Angela and I, there are so few places too in the media where a couple of ducks like us can get on and have a go and have a rave and that there are so many of us. Um, so uh, just uh, keep your eye out for when we come back again and we promise we won't fight ever. 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 And ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to plug her, her Ms. Harmer's uh, enterprise. Her new enterprise is a, is a website which she has started up called thehoopla.com.au and I urge you to go and pay it a visit. And also she'll be signing books because she's a prolific author. She'll be signing books in the okay. vestibule a little later on. Yes, uh, the Hoopla is a daily magazine for women like Ange and I and uh, you'll also find when you go there a fantastic article about Angela uh, went to Cambodia for Habitat for Humanity. She went to uh, uh, yeah that's right Cambodia f and, and to build back. houses and she's going back again in a couple in, of weeks in with her daughter and they're going to be building houses there for Habitat. So I know that she looks incredi incredibly glamorous today but if you'd like to see her um, eaten by mosquitoes with no makeup and a filthy old t-shirt and laying bricks and laying bricks come and have a look and thanks so much for uh, having us here all the organizers and we hope you have a wonderful wonderful uh, rest of the evening and afternoon afternoon evening thanks for having us thanks here. bye